We just completed a long-scale study of what happens to the human body during one year of living in space. And actually, Scott Kelly, who was up there for one year, ended up having longer telomeres, which are at the ends of chromosomes, so almost as if he got younger in space. And also thousands and thousands of his genes changed their expression in response to being in zero gravity and having all the radiation. So we see many, many changes to the human body in space but almost all of them are turned back to normal when he comes back to Earth. And overall, we think it's very good news for looking at missions to go to Mars or potentially farther. If you consider what would happen to the human body on the way to Mars, which would be much farther, so it would take you maybe nine months to get there, you might have to spend another year there and then also come back another nine months. It probably would be at least 500 days. It could be as long as three years to go there and back for a Martian mission, we know that it'll probably be almost five to even 10 times as much radiation on the body. So one of the really big questions we have is how much the body can tolerate and how much it can survive in places of really high radiation, like between planets. So far, we know from the one-year mission from Scott Kelly that it can do a pretty good job, but we really want to start to model this uh, on Earth as well as for other astronauts to make sure we can protect them and, and me measure their health and their body uh, so that they can survive on Mars. There are two really big factors that complicate the mission to Mars. And one of them is just the zero gravity, that you know, essentially your body has to adapt to it. But we've seen that the body does a pretty good job of adapting to zero gravity, even though it's not always pleasant. But the other one is the radiation, which we know will be anywhere from five to 10 times as much. And what that does to the body is eventually cells will die off, it'll, it'll break the DNA, the body has to constantly be repairing itself, and it's just much more difficult. So we think you know, those are some of the key questions that we'll be looking at, and the radiation is probably the biggest concern. Some of the results from our study actually were the opposite of what we expected. So for example, the telomeres, which normally shrink as we all get older, they actually got longer when he was in space, traveling at eight kilometers per second, you know, orbiting the Earth. And also we saw many genes change expression go up and down in the beginning, but then six times as many change at the end of the flight. So there does seem to be not just a little bit of adaptation, but a continual adaptation and response to zero gravity and the radiation more than, more than we expected by far. So the changes that we saw in space, you know, most of them went back to normal when he's back on Earth, but it, and it's different from what you'd see from someone else just living on Earth. We saw the DNA damage persisted even when he came back to Earth, so that had, had some long lasting changes, and then also the gene expression, where genes go up and down, uh, several hundred of them were still as if they were still in space. The body was still disrupted in terms of how genes were regulated compared to when he was in space. So we think most things returned to normal, but not everything. Looking at MAQC today versus what previous work has done, it's really a, a leap forward in terms of grabbing the data, analyzing it, having reproducibility, really making sure that this era of big data is actually very useful and really applied to medicine and helpful for people. So I think this society is really making sure that the big data has some big utility and it's in making sure that it's done you know, accurately and reproducibly and will help a lot of people in many disciplines. For the MAQC meetings, these have a really large impact on many fields of science and, and I think it will continue to. So for medicine, we can look at how we diagnose cancer better, infectious disease, how embryos develop. And I actually really think it'll be the day that you're born, you'll have your genetic code analyzed and you'll have a roadmap for what drugs you should take and what will be a good sort of way to build your life so that you can understand genetic risk and then avoid disease long before you get it. And even predict disease when you're on the way and then detect it far earlier. So I think for medicine, it's really going to change almost everything about how we practice medicine and, and measure our bodies.